Hello and welcome to my YouTube video. Um, today I'm going to be painting this lovely little sausage dog and I thought I would discuss with you a little bit about my process and how I paint in layers rather than a la prima and, and why I do this because a lot of the time people wonder well which method is better? Is it better to do it all in one go or am I better off separating my process out? I choose to, to separate my process out. I do this for a, a number of reasons. So I'll just go through my process with you and, and tell you how I do it. So on layer one, I start off with a very light wash with raw sienna and, and terps. This is really just sort of giving me a a basis in which to, to do my painting. I, th I think a lot of the reasons why I do that is because I just don't like painting on straight onto white. I think I find it a little bit glaring and I, I just like something on it just to, to start me off really. So when I actually start painting the dog, um, I start off with a very thin layer of um, terps and paint it's it's very i water it down very very much and and really i'm just blocking in my areas and sorting out my proportions making sure that the eyes are in the correct place uh, i don't really worry too much about the tonal areas and the temperature i'm just really concerned with getting the features of the dog in the right place to to sort of give me a, a correct guide to go by when I start to put in a bit more detail. And I always tend to start off with a, a warmer colour. So for example, here I'm working with black. So I'll start off with raw umber. And I do this because I like to go warmer because when I start to add black, I'm going to cool this picture down very, very quickly. So if I start with something warmer, it's easier to, to pull out the warmth, I think, and to, to put black in and, and make it much, much cooler than it is. If I start off with black, it, it becomes very hard to, to add that colour. So this layer, it doesn't really take me very long. It's a very quick layer. Um, you don't need to spend much time on it. And, and when you're done, just put your paint into one side and, and let it dry. So then when I go on to layer two, I start looking a little bit more closely at the tones and the temperature, trying to separate out the blacks. For example, in my darkest blacks, are they warmer? In my middle blacks, are they cooler? And then in my very light area of, of black, I'm is is that warm so there are many temperatures in the black that you have to figure out um in this this second layer but you don't want to go straight into very very thick paint because you want to work up slowly to it so that you sort of you have chances to make mistakes because once you commit to that that very rich black it's it's very difficult to take it off um especially if you start adding white, it can start to come quite chalky and you'll, you'll lose the freshness of your painting. I find also on this layer that if, you, if you're if you looking at it and you're thinking, well, I'm, that's not quite correct, don't worry about it too much at this stage because you still have a couple more attempts to get it right. It's It's, it's more like a journey, like you're working up to where you want to go. So it doesn't have to be dead correct on this, this attempt. This is probably my quickest layer that I do. I, I spend very little time on this, this layer. So layer three is my hardest layer. It's the layer that I spend the most amount of my time on. So I probably spend about two hours on this layer. I, Whenever I'm on a layer three, I always think, oh no, it's layer three today. It's, I've got to really sit and really concentrate on this layer. So this is your much thicker paint layer. I'm not using any terps on this layer at all. I'm using a bit of linseed oil to make my paint flow nicely. So in this layer, you really need to commit to what you think that you're looking at. 
You may need to make decisions about your tonal areas and also about the temperature of what you're looking at. But it's much easier to make these decisions because you've been working and bringing the painting up gradually as a whole. So you're always looking at everything in relation to what it's next to. So by this point, you'll be able to make a closer guess at what you're looking at than if you'd have just tried to do it all in one go and made the jump straight away from no painting to a finished painting. So at the end of this layer, what I tend to do is I tend to photograph my painting and I'll turn it into black and white and I'll compare it to the little black and white image that I've got on my, my mobile phone underneath my, my painting. So I can have a look at the, the tonal areas and work out exactly how far away I am from the original image and what I need to tweak. And this is what I'll do in my layer four. It's really just a tweaking layer. It's trying to make sure that everything is right. My temperatures are right. My tonal values are right. And then when it's done, it's done. Um, but if you were to use an alla prima method, the reason why I don't use it is because I find that I can lose control of the painting very quickly with alla prima. You don't want to use any solvents or any really much linseed oil because once you start putting those um, solvents and things onto your painting, you'll find that the paint it swishes around on the canvas much, much quicker and you can muddy the paint much, much worse. And before you know it, you've kind of lost the freshness of the painting that you were aiming for. So I hope you've enjoyed my painting that I've done with you today. I try and post every week, so please join me for the next one.